Good morning, Board of Supervisors, Madam Chair, and members of the public. Um, we are going to have a roads update, and we're going to basically talk about three different subjects this morning. I'll try to be brief. Um, I'm going to really, really quick talk on some storm damage repairs that have occurred over the last year. Then we're going to jump over to potholes and county staffing, and finally, um, just highlight some projects that are starting uh, this upcoming year. So, storm damages. Um, I just wanted to let you know and the folks here know that during the past year, since about April-ish on when the storms subsided, we've had contractors working on big projects I'm going to show you in a minute, and we've had our county crew working on projects to repair rural-ish roads mostly, and then we've also had puddles and other things going on in the background, but I just wanted to kind of give a big picture of what's been going on over the past eight or nine months um, to try to address some urgent needs. And uh, so, if you're not familiar with Lime Kiln Road, uh, if you drive, or drive past the wineries, um, and there's a small road called Lime Kiln, and that road pretty much completely washed away for almost three quarters of a mile. Uh, during the January, February storm events. And so here's one photo of the damages. And here's another photo of the repairs that used to be a road. And it was temporarily just a big creek with some pipes that a contractor had to help us replace. And I'm highlighting this because these are the kind of projects our crews can't handle. So luckily, these are the projects that we've been working with FEMA to try to get some reimbursement on but we needed you know, bigger contractors. This is just one example of a dozen of big things that were going on around the county that contractors are helping us with. Um, so that was them working in the creek, and here's kind of a before and after picture. So, big difference. Thank you to one of our local contractors for that. While that was going on, we had multiple smaller roads or basically gravel crossings throughout the county that had washed away during the storm. And what that did is it stranded residents, literally stranded. And so here's one example of Cottonwood Road. Um, this was when the creek wasn't flowing, but this is basically a gravel road crossing and then there's kind of pavement and things on, on either side. These are the kind of things that FEMA doesn't acknowledge for reimbursement. They're just, they're, I won't say they're designed to wash out, but during storm events, they sometimes or often wash out. So. This is Cottonwood before. This is where an area that our county staff were able to assist with over the past eight or nine months. And that's after our county staff repaired the road. Now, all this time, there's potholes popping up around the county, right? While, while our county staff are repairing some of these roads and they do address potholes, which we'll talk about in a moment. So just to give you a little bit of taste and perspective of what happened during the past eight or nine months after the storms, subsided. Our county crews worked on six washout locations just on Cottonwood so that residents could actually access civilization. There were five locations on Colinga Road, same kind of situation, either the embankment was washed away or the road was washed away. There was a Browns Valley Road, there was Southside Road, there was Cole Road um, where we just did minor repairs to this one drainage area just so folks could get across. Uh, Cole Road's also scheduled for permanent repairs this summer. Um, there were many many roads where the embankment washed away and we had to come and stabilize it so that the road didn't start washing away and so um so just to give folks a little perspective of what was going on while well, maybe you or i had you know some potholes on our roads that weren't being addressed so um all those repairs were performed by about six to seven county staff i'll talk about that in a little bit in a second well, we also have a, we have a board in our public works yard and when you call, someone calls, or our supervisors send an email or call, we write pothole locations on a board, it's a list, and we just go through the list, we try to highlight the major ones first, but we literally have a list that we go through. And um, so while, you know, we try to address this bigger, larger puddles, um, smaller puddles have started popping up and becoming an issue uh, more recently with the, the recent storms. And so the good news is, for those folks that aren't aware, uh, the Board of Supervisors allocated half a million dollars so that contractors, besides just county staff, can start addressing 
some of those pothole issues that have been um, occurring during the past few months, even during the past few storms. Um, so our crews also continue to focus on the puddles where the contractors are not repairing those. And um, we do want you to call this phone number, 902-2277, because believe it or not, just because you see the puddle, we, we don't. We have, you know, we have about 10-ish staff now, but there's 450 miles of roads. And so we want you to tell us if you see a large pothole, that's an issue. And I'll tell you about one that just came up yesterday that is an example of that. Another bit of good news is back in 2022, our road maintenance crew worker two, which is kind of middle average of the uh, scale worker for road maintenance, that person at a step D was making about $20 an hour. Today, and including, it's not just our road maintenance crews, all the county staff, thanks to our board of supervisors, have increased their salaries. Um, so thank you for that. Um, but So for that same worker that was making $20 an hour, today they're actually making $31 an hour. What does that do? That helps us increase our road crews from about six staff just over a year ago to now we have 11 and there's three in the process. So, you know, that's double, almost tripling our staff because of those salary increases that you know the board of supervisors approved and so we appreciate that and that helps everything right so um so that's the good news um now i'm going to talk just about roads that are going to be programmed to construct in the next year or so um, i did not add the segments which was requested previously so i'll need to add the segments but um, i'm just going to highlight the roads that are starting construction in the next year or so that similar it's pretty similar to the the presentation from last month but um, so uh, we have right road we have the plans pretty much done which means we can go out to bid for right road um, we have two signal intersections that we're trying to get through the design and once we get the design finished we can um, hopefully have the funding to construct those two intersections um, oh okay so one's Fairview Fallon another one is Fairview and Comstock which will come up in a moment so Fairview Road near Los Vibros there's a segment of road that's going to be repaired this year. Coal Road, we've also almost finished the plans for Coal Road. We had some embankment issues courtesy of the storms and um, once those plans are finished we'll start the construction for Coal Road as I mentioned. Uh, Salinas Road near Mission Vineyard, there's a, a, a small segment over there um, that we're going to build after we get to San Juan Canyon. Shore Road, we have those plans ready for um, the segments from Shore to Perry Court, Perry Lane, and then from Perry to San Felipe. So it'll be in two segments because it's two funding sources. Uh, Fairway Road south of Santa Ana and north of Santa Ana. So you might have seen um, some contractors out there yesterday. They're doing some corings on Santa Ana or on Fairview Road near Santa Ana Creek. So that'll start as soon as the rains stop, and then we'll go south of Santa Ana Creek towards Santa Ana Ranch after that. So Union Road near the Union Bridge Project. So Union Bridge Project's on schedule. There is a small piece that we're gonna to have to build towards the end of this year as the, the bridge completes. And because adjacent to the bridge, Caltrans only funds so much of roadway improvements near bridges. And so we have a little piece that we'll be building on Union adjacent to the bridge. That's the other signal, Fairway Road Equista Pace um, signal intersection. San Juan Canyon Road. It's gonna be, I think it's about six miles along San Juan Canyon. We're gonna be reconstructing starting this year, Sealy Avenue. Um, that's from Carpinteria to the, the limits of Sealy. San Juan Highway, we're gonna be doing some pavement improvements near Anzar High School and some new striping installations on San Juan Highway. Sienna Guy, there's a small piece near the wineries. So the goal, um, well, I'll go through these and then I'll talk about Sienna Guy a little bit. So. Um, so down in Tres Pinos, um, there's most of the roads down there will get um, repaving <coughs> projects starting towards the end of this year into next year. So for Cienega, if you're coming from Union, going towards the wineries, there's one piece that's still in bad shape. And so that's from Mudstone Ranch to Bird Creek. So the plans are almost finished from that. That also had some geotechnical revisions that we had to do because of the storms that occurred. And so, so that'll start this year. And then there's one other little piece before you get to the wineries, right near the wineries. Actually, it's slightly past uh, DeRose Winery. It's maybe half a mile long. And so the good news with that is from Union all the way to the wineries, 
this handgun will be in good shape. Now, I know supervisor and supervisors and others are working on funding for some of the paving from the wineries out to Highway 25, because that's the other piece, so that um, cars that like driving on fast windy roads have somewhere to go from that whole stretch. And so we're working on that, but at least the half from Union to the wineries will be in good shape um, soon. Uh, San Juan Batista, so the Force Main project, San Juan Batista is installing a Force Main from their city all the way to the Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant in Hollister. And as part of that project, the county and supervisors have decided to give $4 million so that the adjacent pavement lane that's not being affected by the storm trench but needs help will be able to be repaved while the lane that is having the sewer lane installed will be repaved through the San Juan Batista project. So that'll help a lot of segments around the, between San Juan Batista and the city of Hollister. So. And then um, we've done a lot of temp repairs in South County, as I mentioned earlier, and then a permanent repair that we're just waiting for the rain to stop again is over on New Adria and Pinoch. And there's actually some more roads in the future years down there, but there's not a lot of roads in South County and a lot of rural gravel roads and things, but um, but we've programmed like Kalinga and, and Pinoch in the future. And I know there's a, a supervisor that's trying to find some more money for the roads in South County as well. So um, I'll stop there and take questions if there are any. So. Questions? Supervisor Patrick? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, I love the board. Uh, takes me back to my days working in public works in high school. Um, um, so real quick, the two that I just wanted to reemphasize, um, you're aware of, but just a uh, little narrow. Um, I know it's a little, and uh, I was there yesterday. Yeah. Okay, for your request. Really bad, and I, you know, if, can we get to that? Like, I, I, I'm getting a lot of heat on this, and I, I think it's going months and months and months now um, since we initially talked about it. So yeah, we'll get to Little Merrill, and then rocks at the intersection with Little Merrill. It's got some pretty decent size. Um, Puddles as well, so we'll get to those two spots right next to each other. Okay, and then the other one, um, do we have a timeline on the Car Avenue, getting back to Car Avenue? Um, because I still get a lot of understandable complaints about that. Yeah, so I drove out there today, and I guess I'm assuming you're talking about the roadside ditches. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So the plan for that is to button up the current contract. We got a price from the contractor that was um, quite a bit to repair the ditches, so we're probably going to make that a separate projects for the summer um, before the next rains occur so um, it so it, the price is well I won't say what the price is but it's more than the project can afford so um, so but we will get to it as soon as the rain stops we're gonna make it a separate project so we're gonna button up what's the original project and then probably go out to bid for the roadside ditches as a separate project and see what the price that we get if we can get a better price to fix those so but it'll happen before the next rainy season. Okay, any help we can get on um, public information on that would be great, just because Car Avenue is a major, major thoroughfare and there's almost everybody uses it basically. And so. Yeah, I was just driving yesterday. It's, it looks good, there's a lot of garbage cans out there, so be careful if you're on car, because when we wind the road, we put curbs and spots, and so the garbage cans, like most of Aromas, are on the road, so it works, but we're gonna try to improve that situation as well in certain areas to try to help some of the garbage cans not be too much in obtrusive to the roads, but um, yes, we'll be working hard. Right. Thanks, Steve. You bet. Supervisor Gonzalez. Thank you. What was going on this past week um, on a repair for at Fairview and Shore? Um, I got a couple of people calling me and complaining, and I know nothing about roads or road repairs, and I'm not an engineer, but according to the calls that came in, they do, and they were kind of complaining. So can you explain to me what the project was at Fairview and Shore that we did? Okay, that's a tricky one. Um, our contractor was out there repairing potholes on shore and then they turned and went down to Fairview. Mm -hmm. So that perhaps was the reason for the calls. Something um, about a fine oil mix, a mix of fine oil and I'm like, and that the, whatever we're doing to repair it isn't gonna stay in the hole and it's gonna make it worse it's just a band-aid approach and we're throwing money down the drain and we need to fix it properly okay that that, that, those are the complaints that i got so i'm kind of just reading um from from my notes as i just scratched them with the phone call okay that adds some clarity so yeah that was our contractor that we've hired to they're installing hot mix 
as opposed to, as opposed to cold mix on Shore and Fairview, which lasts longer. It can have a bit more oil. Um, I drove out there and they seem to be doing, so I'll take one step back. When they performed the, the pottling on Shore Road, most folks were very positive about that effort. They're employing the same process at Fairview and Shore. The problem was there was some rain and some water on the road, which they can still implement with the, the exact same process, but it does leave a little sheen and so you can see the oil a little bit more, but I'll drive out there again and double check. Um, but they have a pretty experienced crew out there um, performing what they do. And but I'll, I'll drive out there and take a look at it. Thank you. You bet. Any additional? No, no, I'm, I'm okay with that. Thank you, Supervisor Zanger. Yeah, real quick. Thank you, Steve. Um, just a question about: uh, Are we? Where are we with PG&E as far as that Fallon Fairview light? Because I know they were a player in this whole thing. Are they good with, with the plan? I guess. So, um, we've just we've been working on some preliminary concepts, and um, I, the plan right now. And you and I know we walked it. It was originally to change the alignment at Fountain and Fairview, but the plan currently will be to keep the same alignment and ideally just have to relocate maybe one pole, perhaps two, but we have to get further in the design. The good news of that, one, if depending on their access or their easement rights there, they might be on the hook to relocate the poles. Um, if not, then we actually have about $3 million in our county bank account to relocate overhead lines. So um, either way, we'll be able to, to move it forward. If that answers your question. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Yeah. Supervisor Kello, I just have a quick question. So when we started, it's this, the kind of the forecast is these are the roads and projects that are going to be for 2024. Is it realistic for us to think that this will all get done in 2024? They won't, no, they won't all get, Finish. I mean, if if you want me to add durations, that's a trickier one. But some of them will be finished this year, but some of them will overlap into next year. I mean, some of the larger roads, you know, they're going to take six, eight months. Um, so essentially, it's just a commitment that this is what we're starting mm -hmm. in 2024. Mm -hmm. Some will go into 2025 mm -hmm. as yep. being completed. But yep. okay, well, exciting. Thank you so much. You bet. Okay, and I'm going to ask just one thing um, <laughs> on San Juan Canyon. Um, what's the extent of the repairs on San Juan Canyon? It's a little over six miles. We're going to, um, the, the plan right now is to do what they call a full depth reclamation replacement. So what that means mm -hmm. is, and this is tentative because we're just working with the, starting to work with the engineer, but the 12 inches of the existing road will be ground up a cement product will be added to that mixture of grindings and a binder that will be replaced as the base of the road and then four to five inches of asphalt will be placed on top of it in addition to that so what that does is the base is going to be very strong it's as opposed to like a classical road base which is just base rock by itself and then asphalt if you do the fdr treatment it's not quite as strong as cement, and you don't want it to be quite as strong as cement, but it's a lot stronger than just base rock. And then on top of that, you place your asphalt. In addition to that, we'll be doing some drainage improvements of pipes that need to be replaced and ditches that need to be improved. We'll probably try to minimize tree removals, but there will be some tree removals because a lot of the trees are kind of encroaching into San Juan as you drive, as you might know, but, um, but that's pretty much the scope of it. Okay, great. And um, thank you so much for this update. I like the format of how you did it. Um, it. It's much more informative of what's happening this year. Um, understanding that the project will get started, that is actual construction will start, not just engineering, mm -hmm. right? Just clarifying. And then um, when it comes to, um, sorry, I just lost my thought there. Oh, when it comes to staff, I want to thank both the administration and HR. I know you guys have been working really, really hard on staffing, but I want the public to recognize and, and be informed of this would, with the potential three additional that are in process, that would bring us to 14. We used to be at 24 with the four road crew, four road crew teams, and then we had four backup people that would fill in when people were absent. So that was 24. We're still 10 down from where we were. So just 
to make it clear, we're not even getting back to where we used to be when we were able to maintain the roads, but we are working towards that, and I'm seeing the nodding from HR, so that's really good. Yeah, HR's been great. We've um, adjusted our process to help it be a more rapid review of applicants and whatnot, and so that's helped us to bring in more qualified applicants, which has been great. You're correct, we used to have crews staged all around the county, but for different reasons over the years, that's dwindled down to pretty much one crew for the entire county, but the good news is, like you said, we're building back up, and it's it's been a positive thing over the last year. So. And I just want to thank all of the board members for their support on Rose. I know we all feel and know that it's a, a priority for us, and thank the community for their outstanding patience in this road repair process. So thank you so much, Steve. Well, Madam Chair, may I ask some questions? Can, um, Steve, can you explain how we're working with the city uh, specifically in those two areas, um, the complaint at Chapel and Santa Ana, where it was a collective effort between the city and the county, and likewise with Flora Road. Can you explain that to the public, those that are concerned about that, those two areas? Sure, so um, let's see, for Chapel, Santa Ana, if you wanted, I, I know the Flora one, but if you want to give me just a little bit more details on Chapel. That's Santa. the one that where the, the, the piping was nearly setting up six inches above the roadway that had worn away, and so there was a, um, a big, I don't know what you want to call it, but it was a, a metal pipe was setting up, and so the tire had, the car had hit the area that it almost lost its tire, and the elderly woman that did lose the tire, this was almost, what, six months ago, well, that spot is back. And so I just want to see how we can go back and repave in those connections, that whatever connections we made to get the road paved in the first place, go back and and reconnect those. Okay, yes, I'll make a note of that. Absolutely, okay. And yeah, Flora Avenue. Um, Flora is, for folks that don't know, it's as you're driving into town, off San Felipe before you get into town, Flora Avenue is um, a small local road. And so it kind of borders the city and the county. And so, um, the supervisor Gonzalez reached out to us and and noted that some of the business owners there were hoping for some help, and so we've started at least phase one of where we provided we the county provided the material to the city, and the city provided the staffing to start filling in those potholes there. Um, and there were a few large ones, and there's a few more that we need to get to. But the good news is we made some progress and made it safer courtesy of that joint effort. I'll also, um, I'll give a shout out to the city. For kudos during the last storm events because we shared resources, they shared sandbags, they shared sand, and they were extremely helpful during some recent storm events issues that we went through together. And um, so um, that's been encouraging. So. Okay, so question for you on that telephone number that you provided. What is that, the telephone number that you provided, the 902? Um, 2277. Uh -huh. What does that report to? Where does it ring to? So that's directly to the Poe Courts Yard. Um, you'll speak to um, an individual named Kathy, and she's the one that actually puts all the pothole locations on the board, and she coordinates that with our road supervisor, uh, superintendent. And so then each day they have they go through the board um, of our pothole locations throughout the county basically. So the residents in the community can use that one, not just us as supervisors, that's a, that's a number that's, that you disseminate out to the public for residents to report? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So the PIO, we can get that out. We have a video already in. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. The only thing I'm going to say to highlight also is that we also have a pothole email. <laughs> and, and we do. I send lots of photos because I ask for photos. We do, and, and so that's the other that's that. the other method. That's correct. So um, is it is it SBC pothole? What's the email? Uh, you'll have to go to our website, Public Works website, because it might have changed. We'll have the PIO add that to. I our think website. it's actually on the video too. Okay, great. Well, so. The okay. potholes have their own email, huh? Yeah, the potholes have their own email. <laughs> there. <They're... laughs> and I am advertising that email excess excessively. So thank you so much, Steve. Any other comments from board members? Just please fix the potholes at cosb.us. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Please in front of it. Okay.